Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Sunday and what a huge Sunday it is as well. Just look at that if you're watching it on the screen at the moment on YouTube, then you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You obviously don't need me to even say it. You know what's happening today. Manchester City versus Arsenal. The Premier League's top two from the last two seasons clashing for the first time this season. Both unbeaten. Can someone inflict the first defeat of the season on the other? Hopefully. That's exactly what Arsenal are going to go and do at the Etihad ground. Of course, they haven't won for a long, long time, but they did get a point at last season. They did beat them, of course, at the Emirates as well. So we're going to spend a lot of time in today's show previewing that game, looking at the big decisions Mikel's making, uh, going to have to make, sorry, do my predicted 11 for the game as well. Got some of you guys getting involved with your questions and comments as well well so right let's get going shall we what a huge day this is apologies first of all if you're watching us on youtube and it's all very dark and i'm very uh the color's not great but it's very early doors here because i'm heading off to the game very very soon so i've got to leave early to get myself up north and it is horrible over here in the uk this morning wet gloomy gray it's not going to be a nice drive up to manchester not looking forward to it overly but obviously got to be done not going to be missing this game what a huge one it is as well Pressure on Arsenal? Probably you would say that. I think a lot of people are expecting this to be a Manchester City win, especially after the performances um, or the performance that Arsenal served up against Atalanta. I would say most of the neutrals right now will be choosing Manchester City. Not surprising with their record at the Etihad as well. But Arsenal will be confident they can go up there and have the belief that they can get something from this game. This is the third of a really tricky run of fixtures, of course, away from home for Arsenal in the space of a week. Spurs away, Atalanta away, Man City away, all of that travel. City have been able to sit at home, put their feet up for the extra day's rest, not have to worry about any sort of travel. So all the advantages are weighted towards Manchester City at the moment. But this is football. Anything can happen. And Arsenal, one thing I know Arsenal will be full of belief that they can go there and get the win and they're going to have a point to prove as well. I think I saw Bakaya Saka speaking ahead of the game today and he was saying exactly that, that they're in full belief that they will be going there to win despite everything that has been said, all the focus on Rodri's comments from the end of last season about how Arsenal played the game when they went out to the Etihad last time and got that nil-nil draw. Bakaya's been speaking about it and he says, look, we, we know what the truth is. We wanted to win that game and we want to win this game as well. What a huge win it would be if they could go up to the Etihad and get the result. They trained yesterday at London Colney for the final time before making the trip up to um, the Etihad. Fingers crossed there's no more injuries that we don't know about yet. They have as yet uncovered. Obviously, we know the players who aren't going to be involved. There's not going to be any Martin Odegaard, Mikel Moreno, um, Kieran Tierney, Takahiro, Tommy Asu. Uh, those players are all out, of course, for Arsenal, but we don't think there are any other extra injuries despite that long trip to Italy and the demanding game that Arsenal had on Thursday night. So it's all going to be, you know, what are the big decisions facing Mikel Arteta? What could he do today? I think at left back, uh, sorry, left wing, that's obviously a big one. Gabriel Martinelli, lots of focus has been on Gabby's form in the last few days because of, I'd say not so much his performances in the last two games, but the big misses he's had in the last two games. Obviously, he had the big chance in open play against Spurs, didn't take it. He had the big two chances in open play against Atalanta on Thursday night. He didn't take it. So he's been, he's been, been under a lot of scrutiny in the last few days. We've had Declan Rice defending him, coming out, saying he looks really sharp in training. He's scoring him in training. He's sure they'll start going in on the pitch um, very, very soon. So what's Mikel Arteta going to do there? Is he going to stick with Gabby Martinelli? Do you bring Raheem Sterling in for his Arsenal first Arsenal start against his former club over on the left-hand side? Do you move Leandro Trossard over there? It's the big decision facing Mikel. Personally, I'd stick with Gabriel Martinelli for this game. As I said, I don't think he's played badly in the last couple of games. Um, he just hasn't taken his chances. And I go back to the Spurs game last week and I thought he was really, really important in that Arsenal win. I thought he was their liveliest player going forward. Yes, he should have done better with that chance, either the finish or finding Bukayo Saka with the pass. But he was still the guy who looked the biggest threat. He gave Porro a very difficult day. I thought defensively, of course, he was excellent, as he always is, just as he was against Atalanta. And I just look at the way Arsenal are going to play today, or probably going to have to play today. I think you to have that little fuel injection over on the left-hand side that Gabriel Martinelli offers you, I think that could be really, really important for Arsenal. So I'd stick with Gabriel Martinelli for this game, resist the urge to play Sterling. I'm not sure Sterling's ready to start yet from what I've seen anyway. I've not seen anything from his substitute appearances to suggest he's ready to start yet. And he's he's absolutely up to speed in terms of what Arsenal want. And I'd have Leandro Trossard in a more central role. I just think 
that's where he's going to be best today, creativity-wise, but also you want Arsenal's best finisher closest to the goal. And in my mind, Leandro Trossard is Arsenal's best finisher. So with that in mind, this is my predicted 11 that I think Mikel might well go for today. Um, personally, I would probably have Havertz ahead of Trossard. I'd, I'd really want him as a central striker today just because I think, A, the way he holds the ball up would be really great for Arsenal. And I also just think Arsenal are better when Havertz plays in that position. I don't think Havertz has played badly in the midfield role in the last couple of games. I thought it was unbelievable against Spurs. Um, but I do just look at Arsenal right now and think, you know what, I want Havertz up there. I think the wingers will get more from him being out there. I think he's a goal threat, obviously. I think he'll hold the ball up and bring it others into play today if Arsenal do decide to go long, which I think they probably will at times. So I'd be playing Havertz up there, but I think he's probably going to go with Trossard. Jesus started against Atlanta, of course. I'm not sure Jesus did enough to warrant another start today. Uh, and I imagine the reason he started in Atlanta was that he wasn't going to start against Man City anyway when it comes to Mikel's team selection. So I think he's probably going to play Trossard as that sort of false nine um, and he'll have Havertz behind him, even though I'd do it the other way around. If you see what I mean, I think he'll stick with Martinelli. I think he'll play Rice and Party more as a two, kind of like we saw yes last week in the Spurs game when it was um, Party and Jorginho as a two. I think he'll probably go with Party and Rice today. I think he'll stick with Timber at left back. I know there's a lot of calls at the moment for Calafuri, especially after his cameo against Atalanta. But look, Timber was fantastic against Tottenham last week. It was his best performance in an Arsenal shirt. And I think he probably is just going to want more of the same for him today. And you know, I don't know what he thinks about Calafuri's fitness yes, yet, whether he thinks he's ready for 90 minutes. But I'd be surprised if Calafuri starts this one. So I think he's going to go Raya in goal. He's going to have a back four of White, Saliba, Gabriel and Timber. I then think he'll play Party and Rice more as a pair in the midfield ahead of them. Then it's going to be Saka on the right, Martinelli on the left. And he's going to have Havertz in the sort of 10 role and Trossard up front. It's not that dissimilar to what I would do. Uh, in terms of my team, but I think probably I would, I'd be very tempted to play Jorginho over party, I have to say, and I would probably switch Havertz and Trossard over. I'd have Trossard a little bit deeper and I'd have Havertz as the central striker. So that is my predicted 11 for today's game. Okay, talking about Martinelli, Matt's got in touch and says, we all know there's a player in Martinelli, he's just not on it. Last year, Kai struggled in the system in terms of until that bang moment. Right now, it's Martinelli. I really do hope the narrative of a Timber, Kala, and Marino left side will start to bring the best out of Martinelli again. It's hard because we all have um, hyper focus on his moments, but there's a wider context that is yet to go bang still. I know people say I'm using it as an excuse for Martinelli, but I really think the mess that Arsenal's left out, well, not mess, that's too strong a word because Arsenal's still done very, very well despite what's been going on the left-hand side. But it has been so disruptive. Even this season, I was really looking at it thinking, oh, we're going to have a really settled left-hand side and that's going to help Martinelli. But it's just not been that case yet. Again, Marino got injured straight away. He hasn't been able to do it. You've been playing Declan Rice playing in that position. You've suddenly had the midfield mucked up with Odegaard. And so, again, you've had players playing in different sort of positions. It's just not quite gone for Martinelli yet. You've got a right-footed left-back playing behind you at the moment. We haven't seen that Calafuri martinelli link up which could work really really well so again and I'm not using it as an excuse and Martinelli should absolutely because those sort of things shouldn't affect his finishing you know that's what we're all focused on at the moment we're not we're not focusing on his work rate his performances um sort of defensively and helping out the team what we're focusing on is his missed chances and what's been going on on the left side of things for us shouldn't really impact that but I think it probably does a little bit in a way because you just don't quite feel settled you don't have those partnerships and that calmness that you've always had when you in that amazing season when we had Granite playing there um, and yeah, sort of Zinchenko behind him as well. And Martinelli knew exactly what was happening. So hopefully there can be a, be a bang moment, Matt, as you described, like Havertz had last season. Uh, and hopefully today is it because what better place to have a bang moment than away at Manchester City? Obviously, there's lots of talk at the moment about what's happening at Fulham. Emil Smith Rowe scored again yesterday in their win against Newcastle. Uh, Reese Nelson, sorry, obviously on loan at the moment, also scored second goal for him in the space of a week. I had so many people getting in touch in the comments on my social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, here in the comments, 
bringing up Smith Rowe scoring yet again. And obviously, it's at a time when Arsenal are lacking creativity a little bit. And like Peter has got in touch, his squad creativity is down to its bare bones. Watching Smith Rowe score every other week um, since he left, and Nelson scored two in a week. You wonder whether we erred in letting them go, especially with the injuries we now have. I mean, I don't think you can factor injuries into it. It was it was absolutely the right decision for Arsenal to let Reese Nelson go. One hundred percent, it was the right decision. None of us complained when Reese Nelson was let sent out on loan. I mean, it's just the right decision. And if he can have a good season, Arsenal should hopefully get some very good money for Reese Nelson this time next year. So every goal he scores, every good performance he scores, I'm not really bothered about it. I just think it's the right decision to let him go because he wasn't going to play. Emil Smith Rowe, you all know my thoughts on it. I'm not surprised he's doing this well at Fulham. I really thought he would. I wish things had gone differently at Arsenal. I wish Mikel had used him more. As I said plenty of times, I felt there was he was wasting him by not using him and he's missed an absolute trick by not using him. But the fact was, he wasn't using him. And he wasn't going to use him again this season, I don't think. He'd probably be playing a bit now because of the injuries, but who knows if he'd be replicating this sort of form if he was here and he'd just been thrown in because of an injury to Martin Odegaard. So ultimately, I still think it was the right decision to sell Smith Rowe to Fulham just because Mikel wasn't going to use him. And we've seen that the last two seasons have shown us that. Did I agree with it? No, because I think he should have used him and I wish he'd still be, he'd still be playing for Arsenal. But ultimately, I'm not going to sit here again after every goal he scores and just be like, ah, oh, we made a mistake selling him. It's just, it's football. You've got, you've just got to move on. Arsenal took that decision. They got very, very good money for Emil Smith-Rowe. We're all delighted, I'm sure, for him as well, because he's such a popular player at Arsenal, and we all wanted him to do well. So I'm delighted to see him score, and I absolutely am. And I, I'm just not going to, every time he scores, not just going to think, oh, he should be at Arsenal. He shouldn't. It's, it's just happened. The decision's been made. He's moved on now. Good luck to him, and I hope he continues to smash it, apart from, of course, in those two games against Arsenal this season. Yeah, as I mentioned at the start, huge game, not just for Arsenal um, today against Man City in terms of the men, but for the women as well. The WSL season gets underway a little bit later on. We've got the doubleheader today, kickoff 12.30 at the Emirates. 40,000 already sold, which is fantastic on the day where Arsenal are playing at Manchester City in the league as well. And you think a lot of people will be like, oh, do I need to travel to the Emirates for a game when I want to sit and watch the men's? For everyone who says to me, why do you talk about women's football? No one cares about it. Just look at that, 40,000 tickets sold for that game today, despite the fact that Arsenal men are playing at Manchester City as well. So it's a huge day for them. Hopefully they can get the win they need. Obviously need to bounce back from the disappointing Champions League result in midweek. And they've got the second leg of that game coming up on Thursday, where the Jonas sort of takes that into account a little bit in terms of his team selection today. We'll have to wait and see. I doubt it. It looks like Leah Williamson is going to be fit to start that game, which is good news. Of course, that's what Jonas said in his presser. So big game against a title rival for Arsenal. Um, hopefully they can get the season underway well and put on a show for everyone going to the Emirates today. So if you are going to the Emirates today, I hope you enjoy the game. Hope you get back in time as well to watch the Arsenal men a little bit later on. What a double header it is indeed when it comes to North London and Manchester today. And that's it from me today, everyone. Pretty short and sweet, of course, because I'm going to jump in my car very, very soon and make my way up to the Etihad. I'm going to try afterwards and do a video after the game, summing up the game, giving my player ratings of course, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And then tomorrow is going to be the much more in-depth review show. You want to get involved in that, you know what to do. Come back, reply to this or reply to the ratings video a little bit later on with your thoughts on the game, who impressed you, who didn't impress you, what Mikel got right, what he got wrong, everything like that. And I'll pull some of them together as always and get them included in tomorrow's review show. So until then, have a very good Sunday, everyone. Enjoy the game or the games later. And yeah, fingers crossed. Arsenal can get the result up at the Etihad. Speak to you soon, everyone. Bye-bye.